Welcome to the new Fly Fisher. I'm your host, Jenna McEwen, and this week we're in the city of Calgary and we are fishing the Bow River. Imagine a city that has incredible restaurants, shopping, tourism sites, and much more. Then, also imagine the same city has a river flowing through it, populated with large brown and rainbow trout. Well, this is not a dream, but a reality. Welcome to Calgary, the world's largest fly fishing lodge. Come join us as we learn about this fantastic city and the wondrous Bow River, one of the top fly fishing destinations in the world. I will catch these all day. That is what you're in for on this episode. The new Fly Fisher is supported by Tourism Calgary, Travel Alberta, Orvis Fly Fishing, Adipose Boat Works, Scientific Anglers, Trout Unlimited, WeatherTech Canada, As a relatively new fly angler, I am constantly searching for exciting new locations and experiences to add to my fly fishing bucket list. At the very top of this list is fishing from a drift boat on the mighty Bow River. Without a doubt, this is one of the most highly recommended locations I've heard of when it comes to fly fishing for trout in Western Canada, and for a very good reason. The Bow River begins in the Canadian Rockies, winding across the province and right through the heart of the city of Calgary. Located approximately three hours north of the U.S.-Canada border, the city of Calgary is a one-stop destination for world-class shopping, cuisine, accommodations, and of course, fly fishing. Perfect for anglers, and even anglers with their spouses, there is something here for everyone. And starting in the heart of the city flows an epic brown and rainbow trout fishery. While the bow is accessible to anglers year-round, the prime time is May through October, with each month offering anglers different conditions and opportunities to catch a trophy fish with dry flies, streamers, and nymphs. Best of all, you can walk and wade numerous locations up and down the river, or hire a local outfitter to take you out on a wonderful drift boat trip. The key here is lots of public access and all of the benefits of being around a vibrant city. This is why Calgary is becoming known as the world's largest fly fishing lodge. This week, I have the honor of working with Fish Tales Fly Shop, one of the many great fly fishing stores and outfitters in the Calgary area. Owners Nancy Storwick and David Blair are both passionate anglers and for over 20 years, have been dedicated to creating a welcoming environment for anglers of all skill levels to find what they need. So Fishtails is a full service fly shop located in Calgary. We offer guided Bow River floats. Uh, our float trip experience includes uh, guides, attention for the day, transfers to and from the river, a full day float on the river, um, lunch is included as part of that. So it's sort of a full service experience to experience the world-class bow. 
So some of the other stuff that Fishtails offers is uh, a full in-store experience with everything from rods and reels to all things for fly tying. We also do some various classes, introductory level classes for people just getting started in the sport. And then some more advanced stuff for on river, learn how to fish the bow and fly tying. And then the other stuff that we love to do is uh, hosted destinations to the Caribbean primarily. So Cuba and Mexico would be two of the top on our list. While I couldn't wait to get out on the water, I'll admit that I was a bit nervous about my first drift boat experience. This is a style of fly fishing I was not very familiar with. However, I shouldn't worry, as Nancy is joining me and has set us up with professional guide, Terry Johnson. Terry has been fishing and guiding on the Bow River for over 20 years through Fishtails Fly Shop. In fact, he guided my father on the Bow River 20 years ago, and my dad still raves about the two incredible days fishing he enjoyed with Terry. Before we even started fishing, Terry took the time to go over the essentials of drift boat fishing with me. He does this with all beginners to ensure they understand how it's done and make them more comfortable. So just let it hit the water on the back cast. And let then the water on the forward cast, each cast, and you're just letting out a little each time until you get it to where you want it. Then mending it, and then it, yeah. Okay. And once we get out there, you want and to wait till it's parallel. Can. And the boat's yeah. Okay. You want it right out to the side here. Okay. If it's down below there, you'll catch fish, but the problem is the fish is going to run straight back at you. Right. Right. And and you want to be able to set the hook. So if he's coming back at you, you're going to lift, but he's still going to be coming back. Okay. So. When you want to cast, just strip it up, high up over top. If you try okay. to do a sidearm cast, that wind's going to blow it right back gotcha. into your face. And as long as you're going slow, you get it out there, little mend, line under the finger, gotcha. you're ready. With such incredible instruction and guidance from Terry, it wasn't long before I hooked into my first Bow River brown trout. In this glassy water to the left, you'll see fish rising, eating those little trichos. That's a fish, little guy. Yep, so just strip him in. Nancy's gonna get your line out of the way. Yep, just keep stripping, just like that. We'll get him off real quick, get Yay! him back in there. Awesome. Yes, this is the future. Yay! There's lots oh, of Oh, I see how that works. That's cool. That's very cool. Yeah, it just goes down to the bend of the hook and fish pulls himself off. Good job. It's Yay! A nice okay, fish. okay, okay. Let's yeah. see. Oh, Ooh. nice fish. Yeah. So should I be trying to get it on the no, reel? No, no, don't. Just keep that rod high and bent. Okay. Just wear them out a little bit. Okay. Keep that tip nice and high. That's what you want to fight them with, the tip and not the butt. Okay. Fight Good. So tip. strip, strip, strip. Yep, okay. strip, strip. Keep that rod up though. Keep that tip uh, up. There you go. Good, good. And then you just go. slide them over to me. Woo! <laughs> good job. This is a nice, Look, nice cows. rainbow. Forget the cows. Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> cows. <laughs> Nice and easy. Rod tip up. Rod tip up. Gotcha. Okay. And at the end here, when I scoop for him, if he takes off, you can just let him go. That's it. Okay. One more time. Okay. Strip it right up to the right indicator. Right up to the indicator. Gotcha. And then slide him over. Okay. Up. Ooh. Strip up more, more, more. Strip, strip, strip. strip. That's okay. it. Once he kind of gets on the surface like that, you can water ski him right in Woo! to the net. Nice fish. Another pretty that rainbow on the bow. Gorgeous. Yep. He's about 18. Off you go. Well done. Okay. Right in that Thank little seam there. Thank you so much. Well, yeah, we're doing this Boop. now. Beginner anglers on the bow 
really have to figure out how to read the water. A, a guided trip is a great way to sort of take your fishing experience on the boat an extra level. The guides are really versed in, in working with anglers of all different ages and abilities. We have, uh, you know, folks who've been fishing the boat for years and first time anglers out on the river with the guides. They'll teach you about how to cast. Some of our gear we use is a little bit challenging. It's not necessarily pretty. It's, uh, it's uh, not as traditional of a cast. It's more of a kind of a lob and the guides will go through that with you. So it's a good way to have an experience on the bow when you're just getting started. If you book a guided float with fishtails for your day on the bow, um, we will provide all the equipment that you need. The guides all have boat rods. We have loaner or rental waders. We loan them to guided clients uh, for any days you actually need waders on the river. Oftentimes, we're just fishing mostly out of the boat. You don't even really require waders, but on cooler days, it's nice to have those as a, as a bit of warmth for you. So yeah, you don't really need anything. You need your fishing license and a, a good attitude and you're ready to go. So the average size of the fish in the bow, 16 inches, maybe a little more. Uh, it's not un, uncommon to catch a 19 or a 20 inch rainbow or brown when you're out for a day on the water. I feel so fortunate to have that resource right in our backyard. Um, on a personal level, it's just a great place to go and sort of get away from the craziness of the city. And you really do feel like you're outside of the city in just a few minutes. So Terry, I don't have a lot of experience fishing with an indicator or fishing a three fly rig. What's the best way to cast this so I don't get all tangled? And once it's in the water, how should I be working the fly? Well, you've got three flies on there. If you tried to cast this like a normal dry fly, you'd, you'd end up with a bunch of tangles. So we basically use the water load. So on the back cast, you let it hit the water on the back cast. Same with the forward cast. So you're going back and forth to get your distance. Once you get your distance out, then you just lay your cast down and you're, and you're, you're fishing. But you want to make sure that you let it hit that water, especially with the wind. If you don't, those hooks are going to blow right back into your face. So okay. on that back cast, let it hit the water and on the forward cast as well until mending. you get it where you want. And then when it's out there, yep, you're just drifting, trying to get that indicator to drift as natural as you can. You want to make it look like those hooks were just knocked off the bottom and they're just dead drifting down through the current. Okay. As natural as you can. So. like that. Remember, fight them with the tip. Just like that. Okay, fighting with the tip. Nice rainbow. Yes, that was nice. I think I'm getting better at reading the indicator <laughs> bobbing. I didn't even have to say anything. She <laughs> did it all herself. I didn't even know she had a fish on. Well done. Thank you. Yep, Keep slot them over here. It. Okay. Up, up, up. And come here, oops, come not here, quite. Come here. There we go. Got him. Oh, good job. Yes. <clears throat> That? Not a monster, but a good, good awesome. fish. Pretty little feller. Whoops. Whoa, there he Off goes. Go. In my opinion, one of the best parts of fishing is making new friends and spending time with them on the water. This is made even better when you're both having success. After a quick and relaxing lunch break, Nancy hopped into another boat and we continued to fish our way downstream and it wasn't long before we had trout on our lines, testing our skills again. This is so much fun. I certainly understand why my father raved about this river and the fishing. Fish. That's a fish, little guy. Oh, oh that's not a little that guy. That is a decent fish. That is a decent and fish. That was, wow. <laughs> That was Hello. right on that seam. Exactly what you were talking about, Terry. Fish I was trying to cast to the foam, cast to the seam where the slow and the fast water are meeting off this riffle here. And that's where that fish hit. Perfect. Okay. I did not think it was this big a fish until no, it jumped. Oh my gosh, that was fun. Oh, that's a let's good fish. see if I can get him up here. I'm trying to remember all the tips that Terry gave me. I'm going to need that net. Thank you. And I think my line's a little tangled around my bag. Okay. Oh, ooh, good, ooh, good, good. that's a nice jump. Let's see. Let's see, because I think I'm almost. Yep, get his head up and just. Right at my guides. That's and... it, slide him right in here. Uh, come 
on, buddy. There you go. There you go. Yeah, keep them coming. Keep them coming. Up, up, up. Right and there, there we go. Woo. Yes. That is a beautiful, beautiful fish. And Terry's been so helpful about telling me exactly where to put my fly and just following his instruction, I've been getting into fish all day. It was right where he told me to on that foam, right where the fast and the um, slow water meet. That's awesome. Thanks, Terry. Oh, that's a fish for sure, Nance. Okay, Nance, send him right down here. I'll net him. <laughs> oh, here he comes. That's a nice fish, Nance. Oh, well yeah, there you go. Yeah, just keep casting until you get to it. One more, nice and easy. Like so? Yeah, let that go. Okay. Good, good, good. No, a little upstream mend. Like yeah, strip out your slack. Now you can go out a little farther. Nice, good cast. Oh, 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 there's fish. I saw that indicator. And then move. you just keep stripping that. Got, okay. If he takes off, you can let him go. That's it, just like, like that. This rod tip high, right? Rod tip high, okay. you bet. Okay, Let's just like see that. Here. It is late afternoon. Sun is starting to dip a little bit. See okay. Here. Come now on, put the buddy. pressure on him. Yep. Strip, strip, strip. We keep his head up just friends. like that, and like you just this? keep. Oh. Yep. Just keep sliding over. There we go. Uh, <laughs> well done. Woo! That well was done. awesome. That was that good. That is a nice fish. <sighs> Calgary is a vibrant, clean, and beautiful city nestled on the edge of the Rocky Mountains. Lots of great restaurants, shopping malls, attractions, and outdoor activities have made this city one of the top places to live in Canada. For visitors, this city has it all, coupled with a world-class trout fishery, something truly unique and special. For couples or even anglers who want to do more than fish, Calgary provides easy access and the opportunity to indulge in whatever your heart desires. Fishing the Bow River is definitely a bucket list destination for many anglers, including host Bill Spicer. Bill was visiting a friend in Calgary during my trip, so we decided to get together and spend some time fishing this magnificent river. Another great way to fly fish the Bow River is to walk and wade. For this, Fishtails Fly Shop set us up with one of their guides, Blair Yurksa. Blair took us to a great spot on the river that's actually within city limits to start our day. There are lots of locations throughout the city and downriver where anglers can have easy public access to good quality fishing. So Jenna, I understand that uh, you don't have a whole lot of experience throwing dry dropper, so I thought I'd give you a quick rundown of what we're going to be doing today. Um, the reason we fish the dry dropper is it offers you a little bit of an alternative from nymphing. So you have the benefit of fishing subsurface, where 90% of the trout eat, but you also have the opportunity to get one to eat the top fly, which is the most exciting part of fly fishing. Um, second to that, it also allows you to fish a little shallower water than you would with a traditional nymph rig. So in a scenario like this, we'd walk up, we have a riffle on our right. We always kind of start casting short first so we don't put line over fish. So our, our initial cast will kind of be short closest to the bank so we're not covering any fish with line before we get there. So we'd throw a cast somewhere in that zone. What we want to do the trick to this type of fending and fishing is controlling your line. So keep a lot of the line off the water. 
mend it constantly and that'll get that dropper down as well as you don't get a lot of dr uh, drag on your dry fly that way. Um, as we progress through this run, we'll work a little further out each cast. Once we think we've covered this area down here, we'll take a few steps up, repeat maybe three casts at a time till we work up to the top of this pool, which would probably be the most likely spot, especially for the dry fly, the shallow water, the fish doesn't have to rise very much to eat the dry fly. And that'll be our most likely spot. Even on a windy day, you can catch trout here. Mind you, it's not a lunker by any means. Now, if you turn a trout upside down like that, they calm down. Come on, little guy. There we go. Just a little guy, but it's a start. Many novice anglers wonder when it's time to mend your line. I'll give you a demonstration of when you do it. And this, this goes with indicator fishing or dry fly fishing. This is a windy day, so I'm only going to work a, sh a short amount of water. The more water you try to control, the, less pro the more problems you're going to have on a windy day. So here I'm going to cast my fly in, control my line. When the fly is across from me here, I mend upstream. And then I can get the drift all the way down here. For this trip, I came prepared with 9 foot, 5 and 6 weight rods matched with large arbor reels. As per Nancy's recommendation, I made sure my reels had good quality drag systems in order to properly fight these strong trout. As with many bodies of water, the most effective flies for fishing the Bow River depends on the time of year and the current water conditions. Our guides recommended that since we were fishing in late summer, we would likely have the most success using black and white clouser minnows, natural foam golden stone flies size 10, and bead head prince nymphs on jig hooks size 12. We also used a variety of San Juan worms, including the San Juan worm pattern called Reese's Pieces in size 8, Vernil San Juan worm blood colored size 8, and a red wire San Juan worm, size 10. After having so much fun fishing from the drift boat earlier this week, I just had to try it one more time before my trip to Calgary came to an end. This time though, my goal was to try and catch a big Bow River brown trout on a dry fly. This isn't always easy, as trout will often only feed on the surface under certain conditions. Lucky for me, the timing was perfect. Better, that's better. Oh. Yep, 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 yep. You got him. Yeah. Let him run now, let him run, let him run, let him run. Letting him run. Good job. Now just let the drag do the work. Okay. When he stops, you can reel. You got it, okay. just keep that rod bent. Well Keeping done. Keeping the rod bent. Yeah, reel, 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 reel. Bring him back over. Okay, okay. That's it, that's it, that's rod it. Bent. When he gets close here, he'll take off again. Okay. Oh. <laughs> yep, yep, let him go, let him go. awesome. Well done. That fly landed just above him. He just, he ate and the fly landed above him and he, he came went. over and ate it again, yeah. Those mayflies have been hatching this morning. So he ate that little Adams and there's probably a couple more. That is awesome. Pretty little, pretty yeah. little fish. Get that hook out. <laughs> oh. Silver, silver, they don't really get too pink here. They're more silver bullets than they are. Off he goes. Well done. Thanks so much, Terry. That was awesome. There's a little quite a few more going. rising out there, eh? 
Yeah, they're still going out there. We'll slide back up there, see if we can get another one. But they, we kind of pulled over because we saw one and then he, then they stopped for a little bit and we were about to pull up anchor and we looked back and they started going again. So there, yep, there's one right Lunchtime. there. Lunchtime, there's another. Exactly. There's a few more in here, so. Let's try Just that fly off and see if we can get another one. Waiting to eat my fly. Well done. We're back here at Fishtails Fly Shop at the end of another great day fishing the Bow River and unfortunately it means our time here in Calgary has come to an end. Huge shout out to Fishtails Fly Shop for the amazing guiding services they've provided me with this week and a big shout out to Calgary Tourism for the amazing experience this has been. If you'd like to learn more about Fishtails Fly Shop or fishing the Bow River here in Calgary or our show, visit us on the web at www.thenewflyfisher.com. From all of us here at The New Fly Fisher, Thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon. The new Fly Fisher is supported by Tourism Calgary, Travel Alberta, Orvis Fly Fishing, Adipose Boat Works, Scientific Anglers, Trout Unlimited, WeatherTech Canada,